It was a busy day in court for former power couple XPM Datuk Sri Najib Raza and his wife Datin Sri Rosma Mansor. Rosma has been charged with 17 counts of money laundering and tax evasion offences involving just over 7 million ringgit. The charges are under the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001. According to the charge sheets, Rosma faces eight charges for participation in money laundering activities. This was related to 1 million ringgit transferred into her bank account at Afin Bank across seven transactions between December 4, 2013 and December 8, 2014. She also faces four charges of conducting money laundering activities involving 6.097 million ringgit across 227 transactions between September 4, 2014 and June 8, 2017. She was also charged with five counts of failing to provide an income statement. Rosma pleaded not guilty to all counts with bail set at 2 million ringgit. Her lawyer, Datuk Githan Ram Vincent, says that the charges were not related to 1MDB. Meanwhile, Najib was also in court for his case mention related to his 32 graph-related charges. However, the case management has been postponed to October 31st, partly related to a request by Najib's defence team for the prosecution to prepare the pre-trial documents in a hard copy format. Alois Hofbauer will be stepping down as CEO of Neste Malaysia on November 30th, 2018. He will be succeeded by Juan Jose Aranos Campillo, who starts work on December 1st, 2018. According to Nestle, Hofbauer had decided to leave the Nestle group to pursue outside interests. Following Hofbauer's resignation, Alessandro Monica ceased to be an alternative director to him. Hofbauer has been with the Nestle group of companies since December 1990. He has been CEO of Nestle Malaysia since February 22, 2013. Arnold said that he is both humbled and excited to be given the opportunity to take the company forward, building on the strong foundations laid by his predecessor. Arnold is currently the CFO for the Nestle Group's Zone Asia, Oceania and Sub-Saharan Africa, a role he has held since 2015. Hofbauer says he is proud of what he and his team have done, which has translated into solid results year after year. He said that he is sure that the success will continue and wishes Aronals all the best in his new role. Aeon Credit Service Malaysia saw its second quarter FY19 net profit grow by 13% to 80.6 million ringgit as its total transactions and financing volume grew. Quarterly revenue grew 7% to 332.1 million ringgit from 311.3 million ringgit last year. According to Aeon Credit, the better 2Q performance was due to a 27% year-on-year increase in total transactions and financing volume to 1.3 billion ringgit. As a result of the good numbers, Aeon Credit declared an interim dividend of 22.25 cent per share to be paid on November 8. For the first half of FY19, net profit actually jumped 22% to 179.9 million ringgit. As at an August, the company's gross financing receivables grew 11.5% to 7.9 billion ringgit. Net financing receivables after impairment rose to 7.3 billion ringgit from 6.9 billion previously. Its non-performing loans or NPL ratio slid to 2.07% from 2.48%. Moving forward, Aeon Credit expects to maintain its financial performance for FY19. World Bank says that Malaysia will be an exception among its neighbours, with other countries in the region expected to see resilient growth. World Bank's chief economist for the East Asia and Pacific region, Sudhir Shetty, says slower growth is expected for Malaysia in 2018 that will last through to 2020. The World Bank had earlier slashed its forecast for Malaysia's 2018 GDP from 5.4% to 4.9%. Shetty says the revision was after taking into account the cancellation of major infrastructure projects, which translates into lower public investment. Easing export growth was also a factor. However, Shetty says that the slower pace of growth was a worthwhile trade-off in favour of future stability. The World Bank today launched its latest economic report on the region entitled Navigating Uncertainty. It projects Malaysia's economy to expand by 4.7% in 2019 and 4.6% in 2020. World Bank also said that Malaysia is expected to achieve high-income nation status at some point between 2020 and 2024.
The new national car is expected to roll out its first model before 2020, says Entrepreneur Development Minister Mohamed Redzwan Yusuf. He says the plan is for the semi-autonomous car to enter the global market and would cater to demand from young people. Currently, the ministry is shortlisting two to three partners to participate in the project, including Silterra and CTRM. The prototype for the car is expected by early 2019. Mohamed Ridwan says that the project would be fully funded by the private sector with the help of several government ministries. When questioned as to the feasibility of the project given the short time to completion, he says that the latest technology would be used. He says that the car would use 100% disruptive technology and not follow conventional car manufacturing methods.